I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gavin Desa from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in Suvan Pharmaceuticals Q 9M and Q3 FY21 earnings call. We have with us today Mr. Venkat Jasti, the Chairman and CEO, Mr. Venkat Raman Sundar, the Vice President, and Mr. Subarao, the CFO. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement of this effect has been included in the invite which was sent to you earlier. We should start this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we should have an interactive Q&A session. I would now request Mr. Justy to share his perspectives on, uh, on performance and outlook. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> this is a joint circuit uh, conference call on the earnings uh, of uh, ending the nine months ending uh, December 31st, 2020. Uh, as you could see uh, from the results, I think we could catch up to some of the flag, which uh, is uh, uh, for the past six months. And uh, things are uh, moving well, and uh, uh, except that uh, some uh, logistics problems and a uh, little bit high cost on the transportation and some rapid increases and all that stuff, uh, as usual, due to the COVID situation. But the things are coming to very much normal at this stage, and uh, we also see some uh, new additions to the projects during this quarter. All in all, uh, it is uh, going uh, well, and uh, uh, we, as per the uh, previous con calls, uh, the guidance of 15 to 20 percent growth is uh, uh, will be there for the year ending uh, March 31st. And uh, I think uh, it's better for me to answer the questions rather than giving you because everybody has the results with them and the questions may be answered properly rather than I giving you a run around for these uh, activities. So I leave the floor open for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. First question is from the line of Mitesha from ICICI Direct. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question and congratulations for the strong set of uh, my question is regarding your revenue. I mean, sharp jump in the pharmaceutical and the spectrum has a, a sudden drop in the spectrum. Is there any one off or it's line of your management expectation? No, there is no one off here because. Uh, uh, in this business, uh, everything is a one-off, if you see, in a class business, in the sense that uh, if your supply is a phase one compound and the repeat business will not come back into a, uh, another one and a half year to two years, similarly the other phases. So there is no one-off, this is a, uh, a product mix and uh, the, uh, the number of projects we have done and uh, the supplies we have done, so there is no one-off as of today. So basically, uh, even last year also in a Q2 sudden jump in the sales and the Q3. So is that because of the shipment delay or shipment uh, timing difference over there or uh, on a one particular time you having the better con contact? I would just want to know about that. Have you managed the uh, mint your capacity because it's a sudden jump in the Q3 last year Q2? Is that because of the shipment or do you manage that thing? Sometimes it may be uh, the, the uh, shipments done in the previous quarter could have come into this quarter also. There's a possibility always it happens uh, last 10 days shipments uh, may move to the next quarter. But in general, you cannot compare quarter on quarter. These are uh, the projects, suppose, it's not a generic product where I make uh, 10 tons and uh, supply like that. Here is a project we take up and sometimes by the time we start the production and by the time we uh, ship it, it may be four to six months to eight months. So, uh, 
uh, it is a mix and it is uh, the duration. You have to see year on year rather than the quarter on quarter basis. Can you uh, expect that the your guidance will surpass in FR21 or should we maintain that? I can hear you properly. Uh, can you expect that surpass your guidance actually? No, we still stick to the same guidance which we have told. Uh, this is 15 to 20 percent guidance and growth. Okay, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankush Agarwal from Stallion Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my question, sir. And congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, firstly, you can give some data points in terms of how much was the formulation sales for the quarter and what is the royalty and profit share that is included in that. And also on the ANDA front, if you can help me know how much, uh, how many ANDA filings they have done till now, how many are commercial, how many are approved, and how many are under the development. Uh, the, yeah, the numbers. Yes. Yeah, the populations for this uh, quarter is about 12.55 crores. Mm -hmm. Others about 10.7 crores. And uh, for the nine month period, formulations total is about 31.43 crores, and uh, mm. other services about 36.66 crores. Okay. The LDS has so, uh, 12 in number so far. Uh, five has been, uh, six has been approved. Uh, okay. Five has been, uh, I mean, last quarter, one uh, small product has been launched. And uh, this quarter, uh, one uh, Anada will be launched. And another six mm -hmm. are there. We expect them to be uh, approved sometime in the calendar 21. Okay. So till now, there are five commercial. Right, sir. Okay. And, sir, how much was the profit share of royalty that was included in the formation sales for the quarter? That is a, a trailing time and it takes time by, by the time you get into the things. But uh, we are not giving you that break up at this time because uh, it's a moving car. Part of the profit sharing is already included in 31.43 crores. It's part of that. Yeah, right. Actually, for the last quarter, you gave a number of two crores. So I was wondering if you can give it for this quarter. Uh, no worries about that. Okay. So that was uh, the royalty of the that's what we are giving actually. Uh, beyond that, you know, this profit share, we are not trying to split. Because it comes, there is a time lag from one quarter to the other quarter. If I sell this, maybe next quarter or the following quarter will be getting a profit share. So far as it's all budgeted at that population revenue, that's what it really means. Right, right. And so my second question was, if you can help me understand how the business economics of our specialty chemicals and the pharma camps is different. I mean, because... Uh, till now, in case of specialty chemicals, we have been able to give some kind of visibility in terms of when the molecule is going to come online. Or, and back in 2015, when the first time we had one specialty molecule, you had given a guidance that it's a contract for the next five to seven years. But in, in case of commercial camps, you have been saying that it's an understanding, it's not a proper contract. So if you can give me some understanding, like how the business economics is different in terms of how the development cycle is different for a specialty chemical or commercial camps project. In the, in the grants, uh, until it becomes uh, a commercial uh, product, uh, you don't know the, uh, the volumes or whatever it is. Even when it becomes commercial, you don't know uh, whether it is a yearly or 18 months or 24 months uh, cycle it will have, depending on how it behaves in the market. Very in speciality chemical, uh, uh, when it becomes a commercial, they will use some kind of guidance compared to the uh, pharma crafts. And uh, based on that, we give you the uh, guidance. So that's what's the difference between the pharma crafts versus the uh, specialty chemicals crafts. Right, right. Uh, and so how, like, is there a difference in the development cycle for these products? Which one is? Uh, what is it again? Is there some difference in the development cycle between a commercial cramps in the pharma side and on the specialty chemical side? No, no, no. Chemistry is chemistry. It's already where it is going is the question, but uh, no difference. Okay, got it. Thank you for taking the question. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Venkat from Three Sigma Financials. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for uh, taking my question and congratulations for an excellent quarter. Sir, uh, during the last uh, uh, quarter, you mentioned that uh, we are trying to have partnership with MNCs to manufacture in India. So, do uh, is there any status update on that? Yes, uh, we have said that we are in touch with them and it is going on, but uh, the time it takes is three to two, two to three years minimum before you get anything because it has to be a uh, understanding has to happen and the evaluation by the peer uh, teams has to come in and uh, do the exercise and then again the validation, all these things. It will not happen overnight in a quarter and quarter, it cannot happen. Things are going on without now to do customers. Uh, they are inclined to look into this aspect, not that we have got any business out of it. Okay, great. So uh, my next question is, uh, we are hearing that large European companies are moving towards green chemistry and asking their vendors to move towards that. Uh, can you throw some light on that if uh, there are any plans for us as well? That is a part and parcel of our uh, core uh, R&D process. Whenever we do this, so we try to uh, admire this uh, green chemistry principles I mean, uh, <clears throat> because uh, it's not uh, today we are doing that. It is uh, from the beginning, and uh, but uh, there is only so much green you can do in the chemistry. Not everything is possible, but uh, yes, it is a part and parcel of the development of cycle. So there will not be any additional expense uh, if if there is any move towards green chemistry. Uh, insistence from European uh, companies moving forward. Is my understanding right, sir? Uh, there is nothing like a moving. I mean, every chemistry will have some uh, steps where highly polluting. Uh, you will try to do by uh, doing a different uh, uh, synthesis routes and uh, different chemicals using it to get the same product. And, uh, and some kind of automation and some kind of a uh, one part reaction so that uh, the uh, right, uh, I mean, uh, uh, other products will not form with a few uh, few products only will form. All this is part and parcel. There's, there's nothing like a separate uh, thing you have to set it up. Chemistry is done in the same, but at the same time, you try to optimize the process what you have to reduce the pollution load. Uh, either the emissions or the liquid emissions or the sol uh, liquid uh, effluent or the solid effluent. This is what the green chemistry is all about. Thank you very much. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Abdul Puranwala from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, just one question on uh, the CDM of Pharma Space. So, could you please provide any color on uh, how many number of molecules we we been able to add uh, this quarter, and you know what number of molecules we're generating uh, this kind of sales for the uh, for the quarter? See, I think last time also I have given that uh, correlating with the number of molecules is not uh, practicable. So. Only thing uh, what I can tell you is uh, compared to the earlier two quarters, uh, we started getting the new projects which are uh, going to give revenues in the future, not by the way. But uh, the number of products and uh, is, uh, because these are all mix and match and uh, I cannot correlate with one another. So that's why we are not uh, giving you that kind of a breakdown at this time. Uh, sure, sir. And uh, so one more question, if I may. Uh, so uh, uh, the 15 to 20 percent fat growth guidance uh, is for this year. So would you like to provide any guidance for next year, or how would FI 22 uh, you know pan out for us? Uh, as of now, I cannot provide uh, too much of uh, because today our visibility is only for six months. Uh, but uh, the traction is good, and we hope to achieve the minimum similar type of things. That's our hope to achieve, but uh, the, uh, not having any uh, thing and uh, visibility for me, I cannot guide anything. Maybe next conference call, I'll have visibility of the next six months, and then I'll be better uh, prepared to answer your question. Awesome. That would be awesome, man. Thank you for answering my questions.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Picha from Multi Act India. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir, and congratulations on very good numbers. Sir, firstly, on pharma cramps, uh, in nine month FY21, we have already done a revenue of 489 crores, which compares to about 468 crores in the entire last year. And earlier, we had guided for about a 20% growth in this segment. Now, this now the numbers that we have achieved in the first nine months, this uh, it seems to be much higher than what we had earlier guided. So, so where exactly has this positive surprise in uh, pharma grants come from? It is the product mix, sir, and then, uh, and also uh, the duration of the project. Sometimes the project will be in three to four months, then it will be uh, it will be a bit in there, and sometimes the project. Three to four months, and also five to six months, also comes and uh, puts into the same quarter. So it looks uh, heavy. So you cannot compare quarter on quarter, but the year on year is worth the guidance. Uh, last time when the it is left, everybody said it's going down, but uh, I was uh, telling all the time that uh, you don't look uh, quarter on quarter because these are all uh, lumping has happened in this business model and. Uh, it will be year on year growth will be there, and that's what we are uh, trying to achieve. Okay, so so you mean to say that you still stick to the 20% uh, growth guidance for this segment? Yes, you can to 20% guidance as of today. Yes. Okay. And secondly, sir, it seems uh, that the profit share recognition on our two andas that we had launched by H1 uh, hasn't still meaningfully contributed. So, what has been the reason for that? Again. Sir, we had we had launched two and us by H1 this year, and we were expecting the profit share for from those. Uh, uh, to yes, come. The profit share has come, but uh, we are not giving you the, uh, each item by item profit share and the sale prices and all. We are lumping up all in one uh, one thing. As, as you know, these are very very small molecules, and uh, you will not be having a proper crop like the big big pharma. Uh, like other uh, big pharma, uh, we are saying this is an average exercise, and uh, but it's going good, and uh, it will grow at 20 to 25 percent. So all put together only, we can give you a break up of each every item. Okay, sir, I get that. But sir, earlier, uh, in 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 the earlier calls, like we were discussing about what could be the potential profit share contribution for, and the uh, you were saying it could be two to four million uh, per product. So so. Uh, so if you compare maximum of I said, all together. Okay. Not okay. everything will be that line. I can I also said half million to four million. Okay. So the product that we have now is profit share. I think you misunderstood. That's not profit share. That is the contribution from the sale plus profit share. Okay. All right. Uh, okay and. Uh, and sir, lastly, on this uh, spec chem segment, this quarter our revenues were materially lower. So, any specific reason for that, or it is uh, also due to normal lumpiness in the business that we usually? No, no, this is the requirement of the customer. But at the end of the year, it will be we uh, we uh, say the same thing. It will be remain the same as like the last year, which is a more or less flat number. So we we'll catch up with that. So whatever the because sometimes it goes and a couple of containers don't go, even though they go and they don't come into the uh, sale, it will happen. So, but at the end of the year, you will have the same number like last year. Okay, okay, got it. And sir, just lastly, a small uh, uh, clarification on the ANDA again. So, we had launched two ANDAs in H1 and after that in Q3, we have launched one more and in Q4, we are planning to launch another one. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And uh, and uh, uh, the the two that we are launching in H2 are they uh, similar in size to the ones that we had launched in H1 or are they larger or no smaller size. very small smaller size okay oh. okay thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Jeevan Patwa from Candy Floss Advisors please go ahead. Yeah, I said there, there are only two questions. So last time we announced that we are doing 600 crore capex. So will it be possible to share any uh, breakup of this capex? How we are going to spend this? 
Yeah, we did it in the drawing board. There is a enabling resolution we are taking from the board. That's why we announced it last time. And as I said, this is a three-pronged effort. Uh, one is for the <coughs> relocation of the R&D center, uh, which will take a long time, uh, two to three years. And the other one is uh, the replacement of a block in the Surya Peak. And uh, then uh, some balancing equipment and a small block in the Pasha Mailaram. So these are all we are working out, our project teams are working out. Uh, the, number, the amount is uh, around 600 crores, but we are not finalized how much goes to each activity. I think uh, hopefully by the next long call we will have all the answers and we will be starting sometime in the uh, first quarter of next year only in any activity, not until that time. Okay. And secondly, uh, will it be possible to give any update on the Suvain Life? So you are given a footnote in the Suvain Life results. But if yeah. possible, yeah. can you just guide, you know, how you basically see the, the future in the Suvain Life? Whether you are going to go for any out-licensing or you are going to go for listing the neurosciences. So how, what's the thought process there? First of all, to out-license particular product, you need to have a, a positive result, right? Still, this mm -hmm. narcolepsy trial is undergoing, and it uh, because of the COVID uh, delayed by 15 months so far, and we hope to finish this uh, trial by the end of the calendar 21. Uh, that is one part, and we are also uh, trying to ascertain uh, what the indication we should go for the 502 because it is a uh, trial. It did not make the end point, but the secondary end point man. So we are going, uh, trying with uh, ESMPA and some question answer sessions uh, with them to go for a new indication. Uh, we are almost uh, finalizing that. Uh, we will be knowing that by May, uh, which most probably will go for agitation and aggression trial, which will again for three years. And similarly, we are going to go after the uh, trials for the 4010 for the another uh, 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 dementia study. These are all going on. With respect to the uh, collaborations, uh, we are always working on, but uh, success only will bring the collaboration. With respect to the uh, IPO or something like that, uh, if you know, I mean, when you base IPO, you need to have again uh, all the success uh, uh, in the clinical trial. Uh, but we are working with some uh, customers uh, uh, for a strategic uh, alignment, uh, collaboration and all that stuff. But it's not, okay. nothing is finalized yet. Okay, okay. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Um, now, good afternoon, sir, and thanks a lot for taking my questions. Sir, uh, this pertains Gupta, to the... Mr. Gupta, may we request that you speak a little bit louder, please? Yeah. Sir, this pertains to the earlier question on the CAPEX plan. By when can we get the uh, proper split of this 600 crore announced CAPEX? By May. By May. Okay. And uh, the other question was, sir, uh, I mean, this year you said that you have around, um, you know, 15 to 20% revenue growth guidance. Any number that you would want to give, uh, given the six months visibility that you have for the first half of next year? Yeah, one quarter will not give me the whole year guidance, so I'm holding until the next conference so. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, and uh, thanks a lot for taking the All call. right. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sharavanan from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Sir, so now in the specialty chemical segment, we have uh, uh, two commercial contracts for intermediate supplies. And uh, last time you had mentioned that uh, one or two more could be added by end of the year. Is that, uh, is that on, sir? Are we on schedule? Yeah, one year certainly will be added uh, as early as uh, first quarter of next year. That is uh, fiscal 22. Uh, and, uh, uh, the other one is in the developmental stage, and uh, that will be sometime in 22. Okay. And similarly, pharma, uh, you you said like one would go in the commercial uh, in calendar year 2021. So you have any visibility whether it will be in uh, H1 of the calendar year or H2? Not yet. Not yet. No, no indication of given. 
So as of now, it's unlikely to happen in H1. It's a doubt it will happen in H2. Okay. And sir, now, uh, I, I mean, uh, Rising Pharma, they would have closed their annual results, right? I, I, I mean, I reckon they would follow the Jan to December calendar. So do you have any yearly update and what is the outlook for the next year from them? I mean, that you will be getting only at the uh, consolidation only, but we are not going to give uh, uh, the same thing because we are a minority shareholder who are not running the business. Uh, but uh, as you could see from the uh, uh, line items for me, the things are doing well. I think it will continue to do well. Okay. So, I mean, any other qualitative uh, aspects you can say, like a number of projects they are handling? No, I cannot tell. Okay. So last year uh, we had uh, we had 48 crores of uh, uh, share of profits from them, and nine months we have done 35. So you expect to surpass the last year number, given the uh, the traction is good there. That we will know only after I get the uh, profit share from them uh, after their thing. So I, as I said, I'm not running their business. I don't look after day to day. My job is also the financial investment. We will know both back though. And we hope they achieve the same thing. I thought our, uh, at least uh, uh, get more out of it, but we don't know until it comes. So I cannot uh, guarantee anything on that. It's not in my visibility. Okay. Sir, on the project front, uh, you mentioned that, I mean, it's a, it was a positive update that uh, you are seeing sign up of new research projects. And uh, uh, so so that, that would... Uh, that would ensure the growth for the FI22, right? FI22 and FI23. So it is all uh, billable projects, right? Or it is just in discussion stage? No, no, no. These are things. See, we get discussions many. What we only update is uh, the things that will come into uh, developmental stage. And then they will be built uh, maybe quarter one or quarter two or quarter three, depending on the duration of the study and all that stuff. Uh, that at least take six months in the uh, initial stages. So, <clears throat> yeah, things are, as I said, uh, things are compared to the first two quarters, uh, now things are coming to the normal, and we saw some uh, uh, new pro uh, projects addition is being done. But these new product addition is only the sellable only, what we talked about, always. Not the RFQ. Not, not the RFQ. Okay, okay. Fine, sir. Thank you. I'll join back the queue. Right. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshit Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my questions and congratulations for a great set of numbers. Especially the margins of 50% was very overwhelming to see. Uh, sir, my question is on a broader uh, base. If you could throw some light on that, sir. In earlier calls as well as in the annual report, sir, we had mentioned that no, we are planning to do a value migration from intermediates to API. And no, that itself would be another 30-40% value addition in terms of what we are doing currently. So, sir, what's the progress of that? And in addition, you mentioned you're already in talks with uh, two innovator MNCs for some projects which might happen over a period of time. So, sir, is it part of a broader uh, things which you are working on? If you can share some light on that, and is the 600 crore capex also part of that overall uh, plan of things? So we, as uh, investors, would be delighted to hear your thoughts on that. So I mean, uh, it is the same as uh, things are going on well. It is the discussions are going on, and uh, since uh, the travel restrictions are there, even though if they want to proceed further, they want to come and audit. Uh, based on the API requirements by QA teams, which is uh, not happening. So it is uh, the budget is in the positive direction. Things are going on, uh, sharing the documents and all that stuff. But uh, the KPI is not necessarily for that. The KPI has like, clearly said, 80% uh, of the KPI is uh, replacement and relocation, replacement of the old block and the relocation of the R&D center. Only a 20% of the uh, uh, 600 crore capex is uh, meant for the some kind of a balancing and uh, additional small block. So it is not necessarily for the API. Right now we have enough uh, uh, capability and the capacity. And there will be some balancing equipment we needed uh, based on the product. And when the product starts, uh, we have enough time to put it in place because we don't need a separate block by itself. 
And sir, would it be fair to understand that you no, know, if at all, whenever this value migration happens from intermediates to APIs with whom, whomsoever we are talking with, then the obviously the scalability and volume front would be uh, you know a little higher than what we are doing in intermediates because it's another thirty forty percent more valuation. Would it be safe to assume that? Not necessarily. I mean, in the sense. If you are doing uh, uh, what do you call um, an intermediate quantity, but at the same time migrating the API, uh, the requirement of the API, uh, the volume term, value terms may be better, but sometimes the volume may be less than what uh, the intermediate requires. Sometimes the API requires three kilos of the same intermediate what we are talking about. So you cannot talk about the volume terms. Value-wise, yes, it can go up, but not the volume-wise. Yeah, so sir, my question was on the value front itself, and that would eventually result in incremental sales uh, growth uh, of naturally, that. Naturally, but uh, that will be uh, uh, two years from now at least. Correct, correct. And sir, in terms of uh, next year, my last question, on FY22, sir, uh, uh, so in terms of growth, we can expect that probably the growth will come from newer projects which we are getting Plus, uh, on the spe uh, specialty chemical couple of molecules uh, might go into commercialization as well as uh, the pharma CDMO one molecule, which might probably go into commercialization H2 FY22. Is my understanding yeah. correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a mix of each and every part of it. See, what happens, not everything goes up, it goes up, keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, they were telling last time, the specialty chemicals is a stat uh, static nature, the uh, first one. Uh, because it's uh, getting the patent out and it's becoming generic, so the volume may go down a couple of years from now. Right now, for the next two years, not a problem. Uh, the additions, what we're getting is uh, value-wise, it may be better, uh, okay, but not your volume-wise. The first product is a volume-based product. Similarly, yes, uh, anything can happen. Now, suddenly, a couple of molecules from phase one to phase two, and a couple of molecules from phase two to three, then suddenly there is a 30 percent growth can happen. But right now, the visibility is not there. It is a mix of all these things that gives you the growth of 15 to 30 percent. I cannot pinpoint which one is giving now at this time. Great, sir. Thank you for answering my question, and we wish you all the best in closing uh, this talk which you are having with currently few MNCs. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gokul Maheshwari from Aurika Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. Sir, uh, could you uh, just give in, uh, for FI22, what is the plans for launching the ANDA? Uh, and uh, related to this uh, is uh, that are these new launches having a better revenue potential than the the ones which are launched uh, where you have indicated two to four million dollars of uh, revenue? No, these are all very very small uh, volume and value based uh, products, and uh, uh, it will not be more than what we are doing it. And it is a number that maybe three to four to five can be launched during fiscal twenty two, and. Uh, Post and then 23 onward, there is a, another problem which will be uh, which we are working out, and if everything goes well, that will give us a better uh, revenue because it's a 505 B2 kind of stuff. So, uh, going in the direction. So, it is not uh, like other pharma companies where you see a lot of volumes and uh, based on the approvals. That's why we don't uh, say until uh, the control. The values that you could see is. Uh, it is small at this time, and we are trying to grow that so, uh, because that is a value addition for us uh, with the profit share that comes into the picture. And there are not many competitors uh, also, so that we don't have to worry about uh, But the value is left. Okay. And with respect to the specialty business, uh, would FI22 would be better than FI21 directionally? No, uh, maybe it's in the same range, uh, not much, five to ten percent growth, if at all. Okay, fine. And um, lastly, uh, just a couple of points. One is on the uh, plans to hire a COO 
where you were on the looking out for someone is there been any progress on that front three you are i mean there there is a progress and no progress in the sense that uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 we have looked for somebody and uh, we got relocated at this time because of the COVID situation. So, we are still looking for it. Okay, fine. Uh, just lastly, only you mentioned in your opening comments on some logistic problems. Uh, is that a hindrance for the short term or where some of the projects would have got spilled over to the subsequent quarter? No, or? no I think what's happening is uh, sometimes we are getting the uh, imports uh, delay. And sometimes you now my like, customer is getting the delay because uh, the uh, shortages of containers and all that stuff. Not only the heat transportation has uh, almost doubled in uh, heat freight and uh, also almost uh, 50% uh, more in the air freight also. These are a little bit uh, uh, yeah, things which are uh, affecting us. But in general, I mean, With the uh, advanced notice to the customers, and uh, they are not getting any pinch of it, other than the little bit uh, fast uh, for us. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav Mukherjee from Ampersand. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, so, um, uh, my name is Sanjay, and uh, that's uh, uh, the, uh, so my question here is that uh, the, in the, the first two quarters, uh, you had mentioned that because of travel restrictions, you were not uh, you were not able to close new contracts, uh, and uh, you just mentioned that you have managed to. Uh, 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 get new contracts, basically revive those processes. Uh, so, can, have you managed to kind of compensate for the time that you lost in the first uh, half? How the results showing up? There is no effect on uh, the results, right? The project accumulation is not only for me, for everybody else. In the, it's not the travel restrictions that is causing me not getting the new projects. It is the customer itself. They are not having any. What do you call? Uh, they are not even going to their offices even now in Europe and America. They are only working out of their home. And uh, well, they are only working out of their home. Uh, but uh, but started moving uh, because they have to prioritize the projects. And uh, then they are doing so in the last quarter. We could get it. But it's nothing like compensating for anything. As long as You are not losing your business on a day-to-day basis. Then it's not a compensation. It will come, and uh, also it is not a guarantee thing. Not each project that comes in will stay forever because these are all the trial-to-trial-based projects. So how many comes into the next level, we don't know. So things are moving well. As I said last time, also traction is better, and uh, it's not uh, that uh, one or two quarters last will uh, stop us uh, growth, stop us uh, getting growth. Good growth. Understood. And so, uh, my next question is that uh, the, the, the couple of molecules, etc., which you are talking about, are uh, more of second half uh, fiscal 22 and fiscal 23. Uh, and, the, and you have always told us not to really look at quarter and quarter. Uh, and since your current guidance is only for one more quarter uh, in this year, uh, so, uh, so is it? Kind of sufficient to kind of conclude that uh, that uh, overall full year 2022 and 23, uh, your this 2015-20 percent kind of growth is something which you can continue despite yeah. all the hitches that we saw. That is our uh, uh, wish, and uh, going by the past records, that's what's happening. But uh, at this time, I don't have a, uh, a crystal ball in front of me that uh, no visibility other than for one more quarter. Uh, which will not be able to give based on that one quarter for the whole of one year. But uh, as I said, uh, we we'll keep updating you uh, as and when um, we we'll get a better guidance. So as of now, we are sticking to the early this year's guidance, and next year we hope to achieve uh, 10, 20, 15% growth. Okay. Th- thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Cinderella Carvalho from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Thanks for the question, sir. Congratulations on great set of numbers. Uh, so, uh, 
sure things are performing as per our expectations. There is a revival. Uh, I'm sorry so, to interrupt you, Ms. Karwar. Uh, sir, this is the operator. Sir, there is a slight disturbance coming from your line, sir. Can you hear me properly now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, what are your key priorities now as, you know, things are looking up, uh, things are better. So, how are you looking at things on a segment-wise uh, or overall perspective, if you could enlighten us with some thoughts? I mean, look, we are uh, very optimistic, and uh, but at the same time, the optimism will not bring the business, or I mean, uh, the results. Uh, things are uh, much better traction, but only the successes in molecules are the ones uh, which are in the pipeline will give us the results. Uh, but uh, in general, yeah, it is very optimistic, and um, I don't see any uh, because uh, even though there is a COVID, that, that we can't really affect our growth. So whatever growth we progress is coming in the way, but there will be delays in the prioritization of the projects from the uh, what do you call the customers, but you know, those are a very small volume of Christian in the beginning itself. But in the long run, uh, they will catch up, and uh, we are not worried about that part. In general, the, the uh, industry is doing good, uh, and that will bode well for us to get the more new projects. But uh, finally, the successor molecules in the clinical trials is that one that gives us the business. So, yeah, we are quite optimistic. Okay, and so any other new uh, technologies that you are, uh, or platforms that you are th or thinking of bringing on board, something on that side? Yeah, we are in the process looking for the, uh, first of all, uh, unlike other companies, I cannot uh, put to some platform technology unless the customer uh, needs the requirement and we are evaluating with the customers what their new requirements will be based on that. Uh, uh, we are trying to do, and uh, one such thing is the continuous flow chemistry is what we are trying to develop, and uh, hopefully uh, we may be able to uh, get ready for that activity sometime in the uh, fiscal 22. And so on the CAPEX, uh, uh, nitty-gritties, you will be able to update, uh, update us on the next quarter. That's yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And, and so just the clarity on the spec chem, uh, Q4 would be more uh, uh, loaded with the spec chem quarter. Is that a correct understanding? Yeah, uh, not necessarily uh, more, but it will be more than what the third quarter is. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abdul Puranwala from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, yeah. Thank you for the follow-up. Uh, so, on the Vizac plant, uh, so could you please update us with the progress and uh, how soon can this plant be now commercialized? Yeah, we just uh, doing the validation uh, uh, batches already, and some revenue will improve this quarter. Sure, sir. And uh, so, second question was on the dividend payout. Now that we have uh, declared the dividend this quarter, so any target payout to what we would have for, on an annual basis? I mean, uh, we are paying every year, no? Yeah, so. We so are paying, right? We never missed any dividend. But we only, we only pay uh, more or less once in a year. That's all we do, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, no. So, so my question is basically with the kind of cash flows we have. Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of uh, expenses also are planning, right? So you see that part. <laughs> so it has to match that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, I, I'll be the beneficiary, right? If I can keep <laughs> money out. <laughs> right. Sure, sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sachin Kasera from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. Thank you. Uh, if you yeah, if you just update, what is the current status on debt on the books and how much is now payable to Swan Life as on December? Yeah, Swan Life, what we are supposed to pay is about 66 uh, crores. And apart from that, actually, we have a debt of about 104 crores of uh, 
uh, an internal accruals or we are looking for other options as question number 1 question 2 is like number of clients or projects onboarded in uh, quarter 3 and uh, uh, can we put the sir uh, the full stop on rumor on stack sale uh, in this call I mean, the rumor you said itself a rumor. Why should I put a stop on that? Let the rumor fly like that. This is going on for last fifteen months. I keep, I cannot keep on telling you now every day that some this is a rumor and that is a rumor. Just well, let's not worry about that part. As far as the capex is concerned, the part cash. I mean, part internal uh, course and part debt. Whenever it's required, otherwise maybe fully internal like rolls only. Okay, and and how many clients be onboarded, sir, in quarter three or projects? Uh, it's not like a IT where we are onboarding so many projects. We don't get that many customers uh, quarter on quarter basis. Uh, the existing uh, customers only gives us the uh, what do you call uh, a new business opportunity. Uh, for it, in general, it will be one or two new customers per year. It will happen, not quarter on quarter. Got it. Got it. And do we have any presence in uh, biologics, chemistry, that that side of the world? The biologics, we are not in that. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Charulata Gaidani from the Lalan Brocha. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. I uh, if you could uh, throw some light whether there is any one-off uh, execution orders during this current quarter. No, there is no one-off. Okay. Uh, right. Second, in terms of uh, order book movement, how how is the order book moving? Uh, are you seeing any slowdown because of the lockdown? No, 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 as I was telling before, maybe you, you did not hear it, that uh, compared to the first and second quarter, uh, now it is uh, uh, moving better with the new uh, new project's acquisition. And uh, our book is uh, good as of now. Based on that only, we are giving this guidance. But as you know, our uh, visibility is only for about six months. Okay, okay. And uh, this type of uh, EBITDA breakthrough, of 50 percent i think would be the best in the industry uh how how frequently can you see this coming i want to get it every quarter but uh, at the end of the year you cannot have that number if the product mix and uh sometimes it happens but uh, don't expect that to happen every year every quarter okay product mix can can you elaborate <laughs> we ought to have it, but <laughs> so there's a product mix, madam. Yeah, can can you elab elaborate a little more on that? No, it, it's like this. I mean, if you get a, uh, uh, the uh, the late stage material, uh, the cost of goods is. Uh, I mean, when the volume, uh, when you make the volume compared to the uh, uh, small volume. Uh, the cost will be reduced and the uh, profit will grow and also the, uh, uh, the value which we ascribe to the number of steps that are involved in the chemistries that's what we trying to tell you that is the product mix so based on that also the value will come into the picture and it's uh, many things uh, combined uh, it is not one thing that led you this one but it's mainly the product mix and the uh, value proportion that brings based on the chemistry we have, and the number of steps we do. And uh, what happens is I may have started this project uh, to deliver uh, after seven months or so. So uh, the value will accrue in this quarter and it will show you robust growth in here. But um, finally, you have to say it is uh, the product mix that gives you these, these kind of things, but not always, uh, because sometimes now, Less value added product will be there, more specialty chemicals will be there. So at the time, the, uh, the volume of the top line may be very better, but on the bottom line, maybe not that rosy. That's what it is. But at the end of the year, we said uh, we would like to be in the range of 40%. Okay, okay, right. 
yeah and uh, can you give some breakup of projects uh, in terms we of stopped, how many uh, we stop giving since uh, since 18 months because uh, it's uh, not correlated home because the number of project has not been it is only what you do see the project and it is difficult to you break up on that and that's why we are not uh, we have to spend the very bit number of projects okay thank you and all the best Thank you. The next question is from the line of Purvisha from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for taking my question. Firstly, uh, congratulations on the great set of numbers. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, my one is a bookkeeping question, and the other is a broader one. So, starting with the bookkeeping, I would like to understand the cost of. Uh, Debt that we have. I mean, at, uh, I I understand you said 104 crores is the working capital and term loan. So, at what cost uh, is it? It will be around five percent. Five percent. Yeah, under five percent. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, so, just a broader question that I would like to understand is. uh so in terms of covid uh, as we know that um, uh, as a country we've been faring quite well and uh, we don't need we've not seen a second uh, wave so far touch wood but uh, in the uh, other countries specifically us and europe region we've seen uh, the second wave coming back and uh, uh, as i've been talking to other companies also they've been facing some issues in uh, supply uh, of raw material which has led to increase in the raw material cost and the other was the logistic cost which has also spiked up so are we seeing this uh, affecting us in the upcoming quarter or in the near term and uh, how, how do you see the uh, these cost uh, for us i mean uh, there is a, uh, uh, there increment in cost on the logistics and the raw materials uh and all i mean um, uh, which we are now observing but uh, if it is a uh, exorbitant then now uh, we will uh, request the customer to take some part of it and uh, sharing the uh, additional cost uh, those are the things and uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, that's what i was telling there are some irritants uh, but in all in all uh, it is keeping the, but there is no um strategies as of today and uh, like what we used to have and uh, right. only some delays are happening which we in collaboration with customers uh, planning properly so that they don't get uh, disturbed and we don't get disturbed things are uh, otherwise going okay there is slight uh, maybe big to 4% uh, uh additional costs are happening at some parts okay okay uh so so uh, just a not last follow up on it was that uh do we uh, like you said of course that uh, you know the 51% margins is something that you would like to have every quarter but i understand that's not uh, that uh, i would in fact i would also like if it's consistent enough for the upcoming quarters as well but what is the broader range that you feel that uh, these are sustainable irrespective of the logistics or raw the spike that you have? Yeah, uh, what is it? Is it sustainable? Is it your perception? No, 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 no. Sustainable is based on the product mix, but uh, that's not a sustainable thing. What I have given around forty percent of the bid. That's the question you're asking. Uh, yes, sir. So my question was yes, that I understand that 51% is not sustainable. But what is the sustainable margins that you're looking, irrespective of the raw material spike and the logistics uh, uh, increase? Around 40%. Four zero. Four zero. So that's quite a <laughs> sharp. I mean, okay, fair enough. So not an issue. And uh, all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anshul Segal from Kotak PMS. Please go ahead. Um, thanks for taking my question, um, and uh, congrats on great results, um, sir. Uh, your your uh, um, formulation revenues for this quarter were about 23 crores. How much of uh, 
you know was the how much was the contribution from rising uh, uh, pharma sales in this 23 crores as also for the 68 crores for the 9 months so uh, we are uh, 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 not giving customer by customer uh, things and we are only giving you broader numbers so we are not giving the break up of the sale price break up of the profit share break up the which customer and all that stuff is not possible and uh, uh, we will not be giving that and uh, he, he was saying only these are the promulgation uh, revenues and they will go by 20 to 25 percent as of today Sure, uh, and uh, uh, just uh, qualitatively, will it be a substantial number as a proportion of these revenues um, with sales to rising? No, it's not substantial. It's normal only. I mean, there's nothing like uh, whatever data uh, based on the existing sales. So we are giving you data of the total growth for the next one or two years. Okay. Uh, secondly. Um, are we looking to you know the capex that we are doing 600 650 crores in this are we looking to move from say development batches towards uh, more mass epr manufacturing or will there be a component of that in this capex no no i think uh, nobody is listening to me uh, i keep telling this is uh, 80% is for the relocation and uh, 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 rebuilding the one of the old block only 20% is going for the balancing equipment from uh, some new small block uh, it, it is only the relocation of the R&D center and the replacement of the old block a 35 year old block in the surya peet those are the main cost drivers the other 100 120 crores will be for a small block in the parsham alaram So the uh, budget estimates will be uh, finalized uh, after getting all the quotes and all those things by the first quarter, and we will have these uh, uh, timelines and all. It will take two to three years for all this. It's not going to be in one year, uh, two to three years time frame. So we'll give you that update in the May contract call. Got it, sir. Uh, my only question was that uh, uh, will the Uh, you know since you're saying that most of it will be replacement uh, of existing assets uh, will it include any incremental uh, you know business uh, uh, from these assets or will it be just uh, the same business that we are doing just now and uh, it will only be upgradation of assets it's only upgradation okay got it thanks uh, and again congrats on great numbers thanks a lot thank you The next question is from the line of Akshay Sam from Atman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Mr. Jesse. Uh, congratulations on a very good set of numbers. So, I just had, yeah, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, as you may know, a lot of these new novel drugs are the market share of biologics is uh, slowly increasing. Uh, do we have any plans, say, in the future, to acquire such capabilities? Because a lot of our competitors, such as Loris. and sin gene uh, possess this capability so do we have uh, any plans in the future to venture towards that i have not no sir uh, okay so uh, secondly uh, do we only cater to big pharma companies or do we also cater to a lot of these uh, smaller asset light nimble pharma companies uh, if yes uh, what is the roughly what is what would be the uh, contribution uh, from uh, both of them We only deal 90% of the time with big pharma. Only uh, virtual companies and uh, the uh, small body companies only form part of the 15 to 20% of the enterprise pharma. But the main customers, because it's innovation and growth, it comes from the clinical trial based activity. It comes from the big pharma, not the uh, small ones. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohan Adwan from from Multiac. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. Most of my questions have been answered. So, just one broad question: If I look at the history of uh, our uh, cramps business, it has been a very lumpy business year on year. and especially in years where the commercial contribution has been very high the next year on that base to grow has been very difficult 
but if you look at the past two years fy20 we've done really well 21 on that high base we've done well so i wanted to understand what is the underlying you know uh, change that has happened if at all is it that you know more molecules are moving from phase 1 to phase 2 uh, is it that the commitment from the sponsor is higher versus what it used to be uh, or is it that we are having more projects in phase 1 or more commercialization so while i don't need the you know a number of projects uh, what has caused the sustainability of growth rate even from high base and the outlook uh, for that thank you sir yeah uh, see this uh, for all, this one, uh, all this put together you can say the answer but at the same time see four five years ago we do not have a commercial uh, products only the uh, mix and match of phase one two and three so there is no guarantee that it will uh, generate some revenue even the commercial i mean uh, it will not give you year on year revenue maybe 18 months time say or 24 months time so some basis uh, uh, base loading has happened in the commercial things coming into picture and these mix and match is adding to that one so that's why you see a little bit sustainability at this time as the number of molecules moves into the commercial and the base loading effect will come into picture and this mix and match adds to that then a uh, little bit more sustainable and more uh, what do you call uh, predictable things will happen and so this is the nature of the business so it long it has to start and when it starts and the, uh, the accumulation takes place with respect to the commercial project even though it may not give you year on year but certainly something will come but uh, in the phase 1 2 3 uh, if it doesn't move to the next level there is no revenue accretion after that but uh, with the commercial it will happen so you see there is a difference between 3 uh, 4 years ago so compared to the last two years so some or the other commercial molecule will uh, uh, you know cross that 18 month barrier every year and so there will be some sustainability that is that's what you are saying right that's right that's right, right. That's right. Yeah. thank you sir and all the best for the future thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ankush agarwal from stalin asset please go ahead yeah thank you for the follow up sir so firstly on the rising business uh, one of the thought on investing in rising all that uh, we will have the first right of refusal on the future development projects that rising undertakes and you were expecting that you will get two three projects every year so if you can help me understand like how are things progressing on the business on rising there is no first right of refusal there's a long thing to go we said we have the opportunity to bid for some of those things which fits into our capability that's what it is not a first right of refusal sir Okay, so on the two three projects that you are expecting every year to flow from rising, uh, are there any developments on that front? No, yeah, it will be from everybody, but uh, not alone from the rising. We have high big customers, and it will be a mix and match for the other customers also. Right now, we have uh, three projects from rising; the others are all from other people. Okay, three from rising. Right. right. Okay, and secondly, sir, in terms of like a medium to long term perspective, on the five years since we are doing a lot of things in terms of, I mean, doing the life cycle management for few uh, global innovators in medium to long term, and also that we are pushing our A and D and this formulation business. Uh, where do you see like for the five years from now the business in terms of, I mean, how much would be pharma business, how much would be the formulations and all that? See. Yeah. we never give this five year projections is on a five months to six months projection but uh, as you said uh, we think uh, we are only learning in this uh, new business of the ata so i cannot uh, predict uh, uh, how much it will be but right now for the next one or two years it will be based on the existing things at top 20% growth we know that's what we expect okay fine thank you that would be thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of MS Rajeshwar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm an I'm an individual investor. I've been with you for the last more than a decade. I've really got benefited uh, by investing in Suvan. Thank you so much. My all my questions have been answered. My basic question is, I really appreciate the passion 
with which you are running the suvan pharma as well as suvan life sciences i just want to understand what is your future vision for suvan pharma where do you want to take the company in about 4 to 5 years time i just need a qualitative answer not a quantitative answer we make one step at a time i mean uh, we have all the ideas of what should be and all that stuff but uh, at the same time uh, it's not possible uh, unless uh, you are a genetic minded then i can say i want to achieve 1000 crores or 10000 crores whatever it may be but when it comes to the innovation and growth uh, we want to uh, enhance from the intermediate to the penetrant to the apis uh, in the innovation side of supply chain and of course it all depends on the successor molecules in the clinical trial so we take one step at a time but we are going to leap forward into the five years from now but i have a hopes of doing so many things but uh, uh, to achieve that uh, it has to be a collaborative effort and uh, that's where we are trying to align with the uh, uh, innovators and uh, thanks for uh, collaborating with us over the last 10 years and staying with us thank you very much sir and, but, and so, so definitely we are going going into apis correct in future yeah i mean innovative apis yes that's what our intent is okay okay thank you. thank you so much sir thank you thank you. Thank, you. thank you thank you the next question is from the line of vayan atyan individual investor please go ahead good afternoon sir and congrats for a great set of numbers uh just to get a few insights into the mind of sri jasti ji uh one is uh, a follow up question of what the previous uh, person had said uh your journey has been a long one and uh, with a 1.5 billion cap market capitalization after two decades what's next basically are you satisfied with this part- particular uh, set of achievements or what is what are you trying to achieve more now like uh, and how do you plan to do it is uh, is my question uh, number 1 please see the thing is uh, you will never be satisfied no uh, neither you are satisfied right you are not making so much money in the market whatever it is you will not be satisfied right this uh, what it is and uh, what we are to achieve there is no change as i was telling to the customer we are not to be caught in the mix and we are doing things which is uh, good for the business good for the customer and it's a collaborative effort and also finally it is the success of the uh, uh, molecules in the clinical trials will be our success and uh, we can give you long term projects up to the end i can call step wise and that's what it is um so thanks and second question regarding uh, suvan life uh, regarding the suvan neurosciences which was supposed to like you are exploring the possibility of an ipo in the us the fastest way nowadays i believe is the spac group the special purpose acquisition companies which are now in the limelight in the us and the fastest way for any company to merge is uh, to get into the uh, us market or uh, the nasdaq or the dow is through the spac companies are we also exploring such a possibility please our new spacs is a us subsidiary i mean uh, us entity only it is a wholly owned subsidiary of life sciences and uh, we are working with various options and uh, it will take time i mean because they were telling the other cost uh, you know uh, caller that uh, success of the molecule we give you the value addition either for the ipo or the collaboration uh, something like that so uh, we are now going to uh, achieving that success uh, only the success will come after the clinical trial is over uh, this covid delayed us by 15 months and uh, hopefully things will move in the right direction in the next few months we are working on various opportunities but uh, it's nothing is my uh, mind yet thank you sir thank you very much indeed and i wish you all the best and wish your family too thank and you. along with all your employees and colleagues too thank you thank god bless you thank you, sir. thank you the next question is from the line of mayur damani individual investor please go ahead hello good afternoon and uh, congratulations for excellent set of numbers and uh, covering the deficit of h1 in the q3 and i expect the same to be covered in q4 and uh, you keeping up the guidance of 15 to 20 annual uh, <laughs> annual wise so my just my first question is related to suvan life sciences and uh, the last con call you had mentioned that we have uh, 
a sufficient cash to manage the show for uh, around uh, nine months or so from the last con call, nine months to twelve months. So, what is the current situation of that? Means uh, I just want to know so that uh, maybe we can expect something after nine months. See, at the time uh, things are, uh, I mean, uh, not this slow uh, based on the COVID. Uh, the for the next activity to take place. Uh, still, uh, uh, we are working out various options how to fund that one, and uh, we are not finalized. Uh, they were telling to the customer, neither like you nor uh, what do you call the asset-based uh, collaboration or, uh, or uh, pipeline-based collaboration. All the things are going on well, uh, but uh, nothing has been finalized yet. Okay. Okay, and my next question is regarding uh, generally with respect to success, succession planning at the senior management level. Means uh, this is further to the previous questions. Means uh, I have been with Suren family for the last ten years, and uh, I intend to be so for the next ten years as well. But uh, I just want to know, means any induction of any professional management from outside. Though I am very confident on Dr. Jerry Singh and Dr. Mr. Shivari and others, but still means. Uh, Your guidance and support, that is, uh, Mr. Justice, support and guidance will always be there. But if I intend to hold the Suvan Group for the next ten years or so, means uh, any sort of succession planning in place? Yeah, we are working out uh, various options. Uh, the, mainly the professionalizing uh, this thing and uh, getting a professional uh, for this kind of a company is a very difficult proposition. But uh, we are working on that direction. Also, we are working with the uh, family-based uh, succession for the second level of operations. That is also going on with uh, the training going on in years. Things are okay. I mean, right now it's need, uh, not a need at uh, this time, but uh, we are looking for a proper person uh, rather than just to jumping just for the sake of jumping into it. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, and best of for the future, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vineet Gala from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so at the outset, congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so my question is uh, related to rising pharma holdings uh, investment that we have and related to the uh, previous uh, participant's question on us not having the first right of refusal so sir what i understand is that uh, we ourselves gave the guidance uh, that uh, statement that we had the first right of refusal in q4 fy20 con call so wanted some more clarity on the arrangement we have with rising sir uh, uh, what the uh... Well, we need a first right of refusal, first opportunity. Right of refusal has a different meaning, and first opportunity is a different meaning. And also, you need to say, not all the products we can manufacture, I mean, not manufacture, develop and manufacture. Whatever that puts into uh, gets into our uh, capability, that only we will ask them. It's not a first right of refusal. So you use that word as a wrong. It is a first opportunity to bid for it. Uh, so right. Sir. So, so sir, like my understanding was uh, from the comments we made uh, during the previous con conference call is that uh, most of the opportunities would come to our table and we would pass it on. So, is it is it like no, that or no, how? No, 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 not most of the opportunities. I said whatever that fits into our capability, not everything will fit into our capability, right? So, if it's the uh, uh, the uh, what you call the sterilized thing, then that does not fit into our capability. And also, the number of projects they uh, what you call uh, develop uh, out of that kitty only, but not everything that they market it because they have so many other customers also. But as uh, I said, we have the opportunity to bid for it. Uh, fair enough. So, sir, like, is it is it the case like if we are strong in a certain uh, capabilities? Uh, so in that case, we get any kind of uh, say like a upper hand vis-a-vis -vis the other competitors who are bidding for the same product. There is nothing like an upper hand. It should be on the same level. I mean, why should the uh, the rising pharma give us an opportunity when they are getting a better uh, deal with some of the customer? Uh, we have to be competitive enough. So only the opportunity to bid for it is there. Uh, they will give you preference if you are in the same range. Okay. Okay. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you all again for uh, tuning in for this conference call of the earnings. And uh, as I was telling you in the beginning that uh, uh, things are going well, uh, even with the COVID situation, barring some uh, problems with the logistics and some cost escalations. Uh, what uh, some gap uh, for the first six months we should fill in this, uh, in this quarter, and uh, we, we hope to achieve the 15 to 20 percent goal as promised. Uh, I made their calls uh, for the whole year, and uh, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll talk to you sometime in May. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Sogan Pharmaceuticals Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.